Hi, this is Dennis, KZRTX with Digirig, and today we're looking at Digirig's PTT methods, specifically PTT by RTS. If we go to WSJTX software, which is my favorite for testing and troubleshooting, under the settings and radio, we can fi find uh, different PTT methods. Uh, we're not going to look at the Vox, even though it's always an option, it's not optimal for digital modes. So the primary method that Digirig uses is PTT by RTS. This is a physical line that goes between Digirig and the radio and when that line goes to ground uh, connected by the Digirig the radio starts transmitting. That line is controlled by the request to send signal of the serial port. So if you look at the schematic here is the serial port right here. There's an RTS line connected to some switching circuitry and with it, when it is activated the R2, the ring 2 uh, connect contact of the audio jack is connected to the ground and that makes the radio transmit. So let's see it in action. I'm going to close WSJTX so it has a chance to rescan for the new hardware. I'm going to open the device manager and then I'm going to connect Digirig. We're looking for the new COM port. In this case, I see it's a new COM port 4. So then we're going to connect the radio, the audio cable that also has the hardware PTT line, connects to audio socket. Turn on the radio. Okay, let's restart WSGTX. Under the settings, we go to radio. We set to RTS over COM port 4 and now if we press test PTT the radio switches to transmit. We press again the radio switches back to receive. So this is a successful test. Everything wor is working as expected. So the possible failure modes is when you press PTT and you receive error message or you press PTT and then you press again and it doesn't go return to receive. Uh, the most likely reason for that is RFI interference. So when uh, e energy from the antenna disrupts the communication between the radio and digirig or between digirig and computer. Um, we're going to have a separate video on RFI, uh, but in this particular video let's focus on uh, the failure when you press PDT and the radio does not go into the transmit. So potential reason for that can be a problem with the radio, there can be a problem with the connection to the radio, problem with the cable, connection to the digirig, digirig, or software configuration. So we can split the concerns in half and, and determine if the issue is on this side or on this side. So to test the radio and the cable, all we need to do is connect that sleeve to the closest ring and see if the radio goes into transmit. If that happens, this means that the radio is working fine, the connection to the radio is working fine, and the cable is good. There's also a way to test the Digirix uh, switching circuitry for PTT without using the radio. I'm gonna demonstrate it right here. So we connect the cable. We'll look at the schematic for the cable, which is usually published in the product page. Here it is. So we're looking for the ground which is a sleeve of the smaller jack and we're looking at the PTT which is a sleeve of the bigger jack. So when PTT is activated the current is going to flow between the sleeves from the bigger to the smallest one. So I have ohm meter here. I'm going to connect the black lead to the ground and red lead to the PTT. What we see here is that there is no continuity. We have unlimited resistance. Now if we go to WSGTX and trigger the transmit, we can use the tune button here. We see that the resistant, resistance goes to below 100 ohm, 65 ohm. And then I unkey the radio or the 
disable the PTT and it goes back to infinity. So this shows that the switching circuitry in DigiRig is working fine and also the cable is good. So this is basically the testing without any specialized tools that you can do at home uh, if you experience any issues with the PDT control using RTS signal. If you have any issues or questions, uh, I encourage you to post in the community forum at forum.digirig.net. And until next time, 73.